Hi guys, it's Ray. Today we are going to work on a project. Um, I'm going to show you what I use for turners, what I use for my arms. We're going to build some of my wands, arms, whatever you want to call them. I will show you how I convert these turners to hold the arms universally. Um, this is an Amazon turner. There are three um, types that I know of of this turner. Um, they're all basically the same, but there are two that I know I can convert to work with my system. I don't have any of the third style, and I'm going to put a picture of the third style up right now. This one looks like it has a set screw to remove the wands. So if you want to make the conversion I'm doing right now, don't get this style. Get either this one, which is this one, or get this one, which I'm putting on the screen now, which is the other style I have. This exact one that I have isn't available right now, but there's lots of them that have that little gold piece at the end. So either of those two styles will convert in the same way and work for my wands to make them all universal and removable easily. So I'm going to go ahead and open up one of these first. Um, these didn't used to come with all this extra stuff in the box, and they do now. Um, these are harder plastic measuring cups. You can still make these reusable. Um, it's just a little bit harder on a hard plastic, but you let your resin dry in it and you can kind of squeeze it and it will peel out. So they do come in handy. These ones are 100 milliliter size, so they're actually a really good size. Um, these are the arms it comes with. I am not going to use these. Um, I'm actually going to save these for my mother because she uses this style of turner also. And when she got hers, I suggested she do the conversion I did, and she never did. So these will come in handy for her. So I'm going to set them aside out of both kits. Um, they come with, like, noodles. I don't typically use these, but I do keep them around because sometimes you'll get an odd size cup, a wine tumbler or a koozie or something of that nature where these will fit better. So I do hang on to them. Um, this is supposed to be a drying rack. <laughs> You're supposed to be able to take your thing off the arm and set it on here. Whether that would actually hold a tumbler upright or not, I have no idea. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm not going to use it. This is all the hardware for the kit. It does come with one of these silicone brushes, like I tell you I buy from the Dollar Tree all the time. So they're always handy. I do appreciate getting those. Comes with some basic popsicle sticks, and it comes with the machine. This is the support post. This is the motor part, and I am going to plug the motor in and test it, make sure it spins both directions before I actually assemble or do any work on this. So. Um, it comes with a wadded up pile of gloves too. I'll set them to the side. And this is the card it comes with showing what came in it and this is the basic assembly instructions. So I'm going to slide the box out of the way and I'm going to pause you real, pause you real quick and go plug this in. Okay, this one does in fact work. I'm going to move the other turner out of the way for a moment. Um, I bought two. I've been trying to save Amazon money to replace several of my turners. One of my beautiful subscribers, you know who you are, actually sent me a donation to buy a turner specifically. And then I had a little bit of Amazon money left over from my last Amazon Associates payment. So I was able to order two, which is great because doing them both at once and converting them will be much easier. And I realize now that this one can be slightly harder to convert than the other style, but I'm going to try it a little bit differently than I did the last one because I do have more control over it. 
and now I know more what I'm doing. But first I'm going to start by unscrewing this little screw in here. And do not lose this screw, whatever you do. And pull this cap right off. Now on this they have, this one's not just a regular hole. And the other style I said works well, it's just a regular hole. And this screw is pretty short. So, but I think it will work. On my original one, I waddled out this shape. Um, but I think I'm going to pass on that this time because I'm actually going to end up gluing my screw into the screw hole. I'm sorry, the lighting is terrible on this side of the room right now. So, the other thing I noticed in this kit is this one actually comes with grippy feet which my last ones didn't, and they do tend to slide around on my table. So I'm going to go ahead and put the feet on this one and see if it helps at all. I suspect it's not really going to, but um, if you want a row of these permanently fixed somewhere, like a multi-cub turner, you can attach these to a piece of wood, and that'll hold them more solid. Um, I don't. I like to be able to work mine individually so that's my personal preference and I'm gonna set my little tiny screw back in the back side of this for now just so I don't lose it because now I have all of the other hardware sitting here and you should have five screws and five nuts these don't come with washers um, I've heard people say theirs worked loose None of mine have ever worked loose, so it does come with a tiny baby screwdriver and a tiny wrench. You can use those or you can use your own tools, but the assembly on this is actually pretty simple. You put the plate this way and put your screws in, and I'm not going to do this part on camera because um, I'm going to finish the other part of the conversion first. But you drop your screws in and you put your washer on from the other side. And you'll do all five of those. So this, once you've got that on, you'll flip over or you can do this first. And this goes on here. This is the actual support for the arm on your turner. So that, that. Sorry, that is so loud. And I'm going to put parts list in the description, but I'm going to show you all of the parts that I bought at Lowe's to make the two conversions and six new turner arms, the wands themselves. This is my receipt. To get that stuff, it cost me $13.26 with the tax, and I actually have pipe left over to make four more wands if I bought the last piece I need to do those. So, um, I'm going to address this now. I've had a lot of questions about my footballs and putting the footballs in cups. And I don't understand the question. I don't know why it's a question. Well, I went to Dollar Tree to get new footballs for this video. And now I understand why it's been a question. So I usually have three sizes of Dollar Tree football. Um... I've had these wands, these are footballs from probably two summers ago. Um, that's when I converted these and made all of these wands. This one's funky because it's been shoved in a cup for several days. But I usually have the small size, which is this one that comes on this arm, that I will just take right off the arm. It's great because it's already got a hole in it. That my new pipe, and I'll get that little piece out of there that ripped off but it's already got a hole in it so you can just glue it onto your new wand great no problem the medium size oh, which is actually ribbed um, I haven't seen it all this year which is terrible because I really have liked a couple of new of this one so those are my two smaller sizes I normally have and I usually use this football this is what I consider my large size. 
So, of course, when people tell me their large size doesn't fit in their cup, I'm like, I don't understand why unless you're trying to stick it in a tiny wine glass. Well, this is me trying to fit this year's football in a 30-ounce curve. That's as far as I can get it in. And I've been telling people, yes, I jam my wand all the way into the bottom of the cup. Well, this is the new football. I now fully understand why people are questioning me and probably think I'm insane when I tell them that if I need to, I can shove this in a 20-ounce skinny. There's no way I'm shoving this in a 20-ounce skinny. So, I did buy three of these. Uh, one I'm just going to set to the side for now because these will work great on my thicks, but I really need to find something more this size again. Um, so I am going to do a couple of these, but not the third one. I don't really see a need to. And some of these I am going to glue to the wands, like this one's glued down. And some of them I am going to leave loose. I thought I had one that was loose over here. Um, I did, but I swapped it out. Some of them I'm just going to leave loose. This is one of those arm ones, but I did push the hole further. I like to have a couple that I can swap in and out. So if I decide I want a piece of noodle, I can. So I will have at least one that doesn't have anything glued to it. I already have a couple now where the glue is let go or was never glued on to begin with. So these ones already have a hole. If you just turn it on your wand, it'll dig the hole deeper. So these are great. These are, again, the ones that come on the little rocket arm. I bought three of those to do, and I am going to glue all three of these on because this does fit on most of the smaller sizes. It's great for your skinnies. If you don't have this size of football and you need to build up one of the smaller sizes, this is non-skid shelf liner paper. What I do is I just have a whole bunch of strips like this cut already in my basket where I keep my wands. You can just wrap it around the footballs and layer it until it's as thick as you need it. And this will hold your cup super, super snug. So I do have a bunch of sheets of that. It's just the Rubbermaid Grippy Shelf Paper. So those are my footballs that I use. To anybody that I've told that this is great and this is all you need, I am so, so sorry. I literally had no idea until I went to buy my footballs that these were too freaking big. They did have this little tiny baby one for 50 cents that, um, I don't know what size this is. Clearly they didn't have a lot of them because this was the last one and it was 50 cents. But I am going to cut a hole in this one but not attach it. This size will be good for mugs and things like that. So that is going to stay on, stay for one of the ones that doesn't have a permanent fixture. Okay. So that's it for my footballs to... Obviously, these ones have a hole for the ones that don't. These I'm probably actually going to... No, see, I don't think I'm going to snip off the end. But, I mean, this is just a screwdriver. And I'm going to... Just stick it in there and get a hole started. And sometimes I use a knife, and I will probably go find my knife that I use for this to get them fully prepped. But now down to my supply list. This is what a complete piece is going to look like. These are the pieces that you're going to need. Um, I build mine half inch. If you want to use three quarter, you can use three quarter. But keep in mind, if you use three quarter, Every single piece you buy has to be a three-quarter inch size. So, I buy um, 
half inch schedule 40 PVC pipe. I buy five foot lengths because they fit nicely in the car. A five foot length will give you five wands. I bought two, that's why I have 10 wands cut. I will cut them down to size. I use my jigsaw because um, I don't really care if my ends are super clean and it's just quick and easy. Um, but I will cut my lengths anywhere from 11 to 12, 13 inches. Um, I did cut a couple longer for these big footballs because they're going to go further into the ball. So that's the pipe I use for the wand itself. For the piece that's going to go connect to the machine, I have a threaded plug. Now, if you've never shopped the plumbing aisle, there are two kinds of things you're going to find. Some are going to say threaded, some are going to say slip. It is very important that you pay attention to the order of the threaded versus the slip because you are going to buy some of both and you're going to buy one piece that is double threaded. So pay attention to that. But from the machine out, I'm going to put this plug first. And this is the fully assembled one. And next you're going to use a double threaded um, I think this is, actually I know this one's called the coupling because this is to attach two pieces of pipe together. So this is the coupling. This I am going to glue to the plug, but not yet. Um, it'll stay pretty tight on its own, but I'm going to glue it just for a little extra and then the last piece is going to be an adapter that is going to be threaded on the outside on one side and a slip on the inside on the other side. This is because once this piece is on the machine, this is going to get glued on here to make my wand and the football is going to get glued on the other end. So this is going to be my wand part. This and part of why I keep my wand so long is I want room here when there's a cup on here to be able to twist it on and off my machine. If you do it too tight, you're not going to be able to get the cup off and there'd be no purpose. But the threaded part is going to go in the other end of the threaded to twist on and off the machine itself. So those are all of the parts. So I'm converting two, so I needed two of the plugs two of the couplings and I'm doing six wands so I needed six of the adapters. The adapters, this piece that goes with the wand, cost me 66 cents or er, yeah 55 cents each. I'm trying to read my Lowe's receipt while I go here but that cost me 55 cents each. The pipe for five feet cost me two dollars and 47 cents each so I got five out of each, so it's about 50 cents for this. So for these two, it was about a dollar, a little bit more, and the Dollar Tree football. So my wines cost me just over $2 each to make. And my original wands, I mean, they look terrible, but I take these out with a cup on them to spray paint on. I take them off and keep them on to decal. By having a removable wand like this, it allows me to almost never have to touch the cup itself. I don't have to take it off to do any of the work to it after I start. I can even, in between layers, I can hold on to it and do my rim cleanup before my final coats. So I try to handle my tumbler as little as humanly possible after it comes out of the box. It goes straight onto my arm and everything start to finish stays on it. That's why I need more wands because I've been finding myself wandless lately. So those are those parts. For these two parts, the coupling was 80 cents and the plugs were $1.22 each. The plug is the most expensive part, unfortunately. So anyways, I'm getting a little long winded here. What I am going to do with these plugs is 
I am going to mark the center and I am going to drill a hole and make sure whatever drill bit you use, obviously I'm not going to use this one, I'm just showing you a drill bit, um, but make sure whatever you drill bit you use is smaller, slightly smaller or just the same size as your end. Um, you don't want a huge floppy hole, that's why I'm not going to use this one, obviously. This one was just handy to show you. But you just want a hole as close to dead center as you can get. Um, you can take, I wish I had a thick Sharpie handy because that would be best. Um, I have one, I just don't know where. Um, not a thick Sharpie, but like this size Sharpie will fit better in the center here. But just kind of mark your center. I have three little dots in there, but I'll aim for the center of those three little dots. But mark where you're going to drill your hole. When you go to drill your hole, set this on a piece of scrap wood. Don't do it on your work surface or you're going to end up with a drill hole in your work surface. So I am going to cut away. I am going to assemble the two turners. I'm going to drill the holes in the two caps. And then I will come back to show you how to attach this back to this. And, um, I'm actually, before I even cut away, I'm going to take six of my pieces of pipe and I'm going to take two of the longer ones for the footballs. I'm going to take a medium sized one for the one that I'm not going to glue a ball to. And I'm just going to grab three more at random. And I'm going to show you how I assemble these. I don't use like PVC glue or anything like that. I just use regular old Gorilla Glue. This is clear Gorilla Glue. Um, I've been using this for a lot of things now versus E6000. So it doesn't really matter which end you use. Especially if you're crooked the way you cut them. Um, but I apply a healthy amount of glue to the end here and just go ahead and I probably didn't need that much glue, but it's okay. Wiggle your thing on until it is snug. And then I will set those aside to dry completely before I use them. I'm going to do the same thing with the footballs. I'm going to um, pour a bunch of glue right inside the ball. This is for the ones that I want to stay attached for a while. And I'm also going to run a little bit on the end of the pipe just for extra insurance. and. Try and make sure the ball is going on straight, especially if you're working it in a little further. So that is how that will work. And the arm will rest somewhere on here, and this will still give me room to grab from here. So that's it for wand assembly. Simple and easy. I'm going to get the other five done also while I'm off camera. And I will be back for final assembly of the turner itself. Okay, I am back. I struggled a little bit. I realized that with this one, because the screws that came with it were so short, that I did have to waddle out the hole to fit. So I had to make a bigger hole so it will snap on here. Um, I did try to attach one with just a straight hole and it just, it wasn't going to work. So 
Well, that is on there now. I will screw this in and I'm going to layer in some glue around it. I already started the other one um, because I want it to be super secure on there. I don't want the screw wiggling itself loose, but I also don't want the glue to seep through to the back because I don't want it glued to the back side. So I'm going to make sure that's good and tight, first of all. And I'm going to pour some glue in, let it get all in there, and then I am going to sit it flat so it doesn't drip through the back where the hole was a little bit big. Um, I do have quite a lot of glue in this one, probably too much. So I'm going to keep moving it around a bit. I already glued this piece on this one and I should have made sure this was finished first because now I have to wipe off where I got the glue inside of there. It's been a long time since I converted one of these so I'm apparently a little bit rusty. But I am just about complete now. So I am going to take a rag Actually, it's a baby wipe, and I'm just going to clean up those threads because I do need the threads for the arms. And I'm just going to keep moving it around and adding a little bit of glue at a time until I'm confident that these are going to stay super in place. But then I'm going to screw this on. I like to put them this way so I can grip here if I get my arm on too tight because sometimes I do that, but this will twist on here and then my arms will screw in here. I'm not going to screw it all together right now, but that is it, the complete conversion. And to waddle out that hole, I started with like three holes side by side and just kind of worked the drill bit around in there a little bit to um, firm it up. So. I'm going to let this dry. Um, that is it. Hopefully I did a good enough job describing the total conversion and the building of the arms. If not, I'm sorry. If you have any questions, please ask in the comments and I will try to get them answered to the best of my ability. I'm going to put the full supply list down below. Um, I'm going to real quick grab the other turn. Okay, this is the other one I have, and it is basically the exact same turner, except for the way that cap came off. It was the same cap, except it had a straight hole, and it sat out further like my plug on this. So this one um, did have a little bit longer of a screw. I was hoping that the other ones would have worked the same on that little tiny piece, but on this one, it's got this little extra metal coupler with a screw. Actually, I think it's got a bar that goes all the way through it. Um, so that's the difference in these two. I will try to find a link to one like this on Amazon because this one is currently out of stock. I did look before I started this. Um, but I will try and find one with this particular end. So, um, because this is actually slightly easier to convert even though in the long run they end up being identical it's just easier to drill one straight hole in the center of the cap or the plug than to drill three and waddle it out to make it fit um, I did not on these ones glue in that screw at all on this one I'm just doing it because on the one like this I do have, sometimes that screw backs out a little bit, so I'm just trying to make sure it stays in place permanently. So, and just getting that little bit of glue dried on there will do that, and that'll make the difference there. So, that is my conversion for my turners. It makes them all universal because I do have three that are the original spinet from Michaels um, that I had converted in the same way, so that takes all of these same wands and uh, going forward any turner I buy I would get something that I could make I'm probably gonna stick to these from Amazon because 
these have been workhorses. These have been going strong for over two years. And um, I really haven't had much problems with them. Um, one of them does skip and hesitate once in a while, but I think it's this one that hesitates a little bit when I unscrew it. My spinets are getting a little worn out. Um, so the spinets are going to get, two of them are going to get pulled out of rotation and these are going to be the replacements for those two because honestly where I work, I could probably just pull one spinet out and I could put these two in, but I really don't have room for more than six turners anyways. Um, at some point I will get a couple more of these ordered because I'd like to replace all of the spinets. I prefer, like I said, a single turner because the way I work through video, I can record and move it out of the way. If I had them all mounted together, I would have to move them immediately every time. So for me, singles work best. I can get them out of the way when I don't need them because I do work in a really small space overall and tumblers aren't the only thing I do. So even though I have this eight foot length on this side of the room where I am now, um, this is where I do my painting and any other sorts of crafts I do. So I like all of my tumblers to fit on my much smaller, like five foot table. So, um, that's it. Like I said, if you have questions, feel free to ask. I will try to get them answered. I will put the shopping list down below. Uh, I get everything right at Lowe's. I typically prefer Home Depot, but because I know where everything is in the plumbing section, it's just easier for me to go there for these supplies. However, they switched the sides of the aisles at my Lowe's since the last time I bought plumbing supplies and nothing was where it once was, but I figured it out and found it all again. Make sure when you're standing there that you grab a length of PVC and um, if you can, screenshot the way I had these set up. That way you can refer back to it when you're standing in the aisle if you choose to do this. But attach everything together, screw it all together, and make sure it all works. Remember, it's a slip, a screw, the two double threaded on the inside, and then the plug that's threaded to the outside. That's it. So, uh, good luck. Ask me any questions, and let me know if you convert any of these and how it works out for you. Thank you.